Hi everyone, and welcome to the bench. Well, today we're going to tie up a green drake. You know, there's nothing more special than being out on the water when there's a big green drake hatch going on. They're a big fly, and they usually attract up some really big fish. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie this fly. For the hook, we're going to use a TMC 100 size 14 dry. We're going to use some ADOT olive thread, a pheasant neck feather for the wing. For the tail, we'll use some green pheasant rump. We'll use some light olive dubbing for the body, a thin yellow floss for the rib, and some dyed green saddle hackle for the hackle. I started the fly off by tying on my thread, getting it to the bend of the hook. I've taken my green pheasant rump, and I'm just going to take about 20 strands off the very tip, the real fine section of the pheasant rump, and we're going to put on the tail. And we want that tail to extend back probably about an inch and a half. These green drakes do have a nice long tail to them, and we'll just tie it in. Now for the tricky part of the fly, we're going to tie in the wing. I brought my thread back up towards the eyelet. We're going to take our brown pheasant neck feather. We're going to hold it by the tip and reverse the direction of all the barbs on the feather. Pull them down towards the bottom of the stem and lay this on the hook so that the good side of the feather is pointing down onto the hook and tie in by the barb tips. Now that we have the feather actually tied onto the hook, we've tied it down in the front of the feather. We're going to pull the feather back and tie in around the back so that this wing sticks up nice and straight. And then we'll go through the process of actually splitting the feather to form two good wings. How we're going to do that is take the top of the feather. Now these feathers split very easily. You pull from both sides of the wing and you'll see it'll come apart and split into two nice segments of wing. Now that the wing tips are tied in, what we're going to do is tie around the front and the backs and actually make them nice and upright and divided. Now we have the wigs tied in at the top and we have our tail tied in at the back. We're going to take a piece of our thin yellow floss and tie it in into the body and then we'll just hold it off the back in preparation for ribbing later. I've taken some light olive dubbing. You can use medium olive also just to match the green drake color and we're going to dub on a nice thick body. Again, green drakes are tapered from the back, thinner at the back, and a little thicker towards the front. So try to match that body up. And dub forward and wrap in. The body's all tied in. I'm now going to take my thin yellow ribbing and make about four to five segments up onto the body, just to form that nice segmented body. Green drakes have a nice yellow segmented body. Now for the last stage in the fly, I've taken my dyed green saddle hackle. We're going to tie it in by the butt, just in back of the wings. And tie forward and make sure that hackle's tied in nice. Snip off your excess. And now we're going to wrap forward and fill in that hackle really nice and full because these green drakes are big flies and they do have a lot of legs. You know, a green drake hatch is just such a special thing to take in. They have really good green drake hatches on the Crow's Nest River, actually all through BC and Alberta. Check your area, see if you have a green drake hatch. If you do, make sure you take it in because it'll be well worth your while. Stay tuned, we've got some more great action coming right up.